Uh, we now invite Mr. Jim Woods, our general counsel. Jim is uh, a partner with Dewey LaBeouf, and we'll bring you up to date on some of the legal uh, matters that have been uh, before us this, this past year. Great. Thanks, Warren. Uh, Joy asked me to uh, get mic'd up so that I could roam around and drive the camera guy nuts. Uh, so in the process of doing so, we had our uh, sound guy come down from uh, his perch up there and we got to talk and I found out that he's a Steeler fan. I related to him that I'm a Cardinals fan for the Super Bowl. If you find the sound quality imperfect or if he cuts me off at some point, you'll know the reason <laughs> therefore. Uh, I'm really proud of this organization and I think, uh, I was just sitting here for a moment and thinking how far we've come. You know, we started out in the late 30s and such, but it's a unique blend of appropriate self-government by the industry and government regulation by our regulators that allows us to really thrive and succeed and handle problems that are quite complex in a meaningful fashion. So I think we're a model. I think we should be proud of the fact that uh, we've developed something unique and something that others uh, tend to follow. We have a couple of other uh, uh, introductions today. Louis Kwan, the new head of financial analysis, is in the room. Hi, Louis, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Uh, he takes the place of Bob Liu. We've invited Bob to uh, our festivities today. Bob's retired, and I think he'll probably, uh, hopefully, he'll show up at lunch. I don't see him in the audience right now. Uh, and also, Woody Gearing, I think, is going to make a, a guest appearance at some point. So. Uh, where is Woody? Ah, there he is. Hi, Woody. Yeah, Woody's in the back. And then two of my old friends, uh, Jonathan Bank and Norris Clark from the law firm of Locke, Lord, and Liddell. Where are you guys hiding? There. They're in the back, too. Okay. Uh, real fine firm and really terrific lawyers. Uh, so we're pleased to have them here as well. Uh, today, we want to handle uh, a number of things, if I can figure out where the uh, advance button is. There we go. Uh, we've got six primary items, the Silvers case, new legislation, uh, the governor's uh, emergency uh, response or fire surcharge policy. Uh, we've been working on a Leslie white paper, which we'll talk to you about in some detail. Also, uh, the new, uh, uh, the reemergence of a New York insurance exchange, and finally, what's going on in our federal uh, uh, government and how that might influence or affect uh, the insurance uh, sector. Uh, with respect to the Silvers case, you can read the notes there, but what this boils down to is the suggestion that a not admitted insurer, in this instance it's Lexington, is somehow doing business in the state for premium tax purposes. That's the challenge. The lawsuit involves the State Board of Equalization and also uh, the Lexington Insurance Company. Now, the SLA decided to uh, weigh in on this because we think that it's important that our non admitted markets not be subjected to the premium tax. They already, as you know, there is a surplus line tax that is imposed, a 3% uh, surplus line tax, the premium tax 2.35%. The accumulation of the two would, in effect, in our view, kill the market. Uh, we would have very little uh, ability to transact business with our not admitted uh, markets. So we think that it's an important case. Whenever we get involved on a pro bono, or not a pro bono, but an amicus type basis, we run this by the executive committee. We decide whether or not it affects uh, our membership in general and our marketplace uh, at large uh, before we, uh, uh, we weigh in on something like this. And in this instance, we weighed the pros and cons and decided uh, unanimously that it was in the, the best interest of our organization to become involved. Uh, as a result, we filed an amicus brief. There was a brief hearing in uh, Superior Court in San Francisco. Uh, and now the, uh, the, 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 we attempted to have the, the case thrown out on its ear, so to speak, early on. That did not occur. Enough of an uh, allegation was made to survive uh, that. So there's going to be a motion for uh, uh, heard uh, next week uh, or next month in March, almost uh, two months really, in March on, uh, on a demur. And hopefully uh, we'll be successful there. I think that there's uh, sound ground to say 
that just by virtue of the fact that the not admitted insurer under 1776 of the code um, has some incidental presence in the state, that is not a basis for state taxation. So I think we will be successful, but it's something that we want to look at carefully. We have some new uh, legislative developments. Uh, we have uh, AB 2956 and 1699. Hank Haldeman was heavily involved in uh, both of these, uh, protecting the interest of the association. Uh, with respect to 2956, uh, I understand that there have been a number of seminars given on this and how complicated it is and all of this. I mean, fundamentally, it's about the fees. If you are deemed to be and act as a broker, you are entitled to charge uh, fees, uh, assuming that they're appropriately based and reasonable and, and such, and appropriate disclosure to the insured is made. If, however, you are deemed to be an agent, it is more difficult to charge those fees. One must first get the permission of the agent's uh, uh, superior, that being the, not, the, the end market itself. And secondly, uh, that market, uh, the insurer must file rates that, are, that reflect these fees. Typically that isn't done and that's what uh, got a lot of uh, uh, folks into hot water. One of the defining uh, issues in whether or not you're deemed to be an agent or a broker is whether or not there has been uh, an appointment filed on your behalf or you have filed on behalf of an unadmitted insurer or an, an insurer, excuse me, to indicate that you are uh, acting as an agent. I should say, and Hank will uh, remind me, that this uh, technically does not apply to surplus line brokers, which is uh, a breath of fresh air. Having said that, I think it's a generally a good rule of thumb uh, to follow, and that is to make appropriate disclosures, to base your fees upon uh, 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 reasonableness and such. Anytime that we get to an extreme, suddenly there's a legislative or a legal uh, counter uh, action to this, and we don't want to invite that kind of uh, reaction. So uh, there's some good news there to help clarify some issues, justify uh, how one can act uh, as a broker, where the presumptions are, and uh, where the presumptions uh, are if you're going to act as an agent. I think it's important to indicate as, uh, in, in this slide that uh, there are several uh, acts that you can, uh, such as collection of premium and transmission of policies, that even those, those are technically viewed as agency acts, those are permissible acts. So just continue on as you have been doing uh, in the past. Now, with respect to uh, 1699, uh, over the years, we've had uh, a pretty loose standard for licensing when it comes to surplus line brokers and offices. In the uh, old days, you could have, in effect, an organizational license, and virtually, I, I think, almost no one else licensed in the operation. Then there was a, an evolution that said we ought to have at least those uh, professionals dealing with the public to be licensed as surplus line brokers. Now we're making that a firm rule, and in addition to that, we're saying that uh, if there are multiple offices in the state, and even if someone doesn't deal with the public, if they're a manager of these offices and the like, uh, then they should too be licensed as a surplus line broker. And as Joy indicated earlier, that's why we've had an uptick of substantial surplus line uh, licenses, uh, uh, applications and licensees uh, in the state of California. Last year, uh, under Hank's uh, Ledge Committee and uh, a number of us, I think Jerry on his uh, uh, admitted market liaison committee, uh, we had a, a number of discussions about the governor's emergency response initiative. Fundamentally, if you're not familiar, as you recall, particularly in the southern part of the state, uh, we have the annual brush fires when the Santa Anas kick up and the like, and, and they're quite devastating. Uh, many, many homes get burned. They're, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, tens, of, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in damage and the like. But also there's a, an attendant cost to that, and that is of the various firefighters and state resources that have to be pay, uh, uh, poured in to uh, handle these uh, devastating events. 
The state is not uh, financially equipped to handle that. They don't create or they don't they create a, a modest contingency fund to handle it. I think it cost eight hundred or a billion dollars last year to fight these fires, and they had one hundred and twenty million set aside. I mean, it's clearly inadequate. So. The proposal is to ask the insurance industry, the admitted industry, uh, primarily to step forward and assess a fire surcharge so they can recoup some of these expenses and properly reserve for the future. Uh, the, uh, they also called upon the surplus line industry, uh, and we could have argued that, well, we're not admitted, it doesn't really apply to us and the, and the like, but we didn't think that that was smart under the circumstances, and accordingly, uh, we said that we would follow suit uh, with what the admitted market does as it pertains to uh, property insurance in the state. Uh, and these costs will be passed on to the insured, so it's technically not out of your pocket. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, we thought that that was the right approach. And accordingly, you can expect uh, some further development of this uh, this year, we think. And the Leslie White Paper. Oh, yes. we. Uh, some of you have been involved in uh, the uh, list of eligible surplus line insurers process, and it's a, uh, it's a bit of a, a tedious, thorough process that uh, many are uh, involved from a regulatory perspective, also from uh, the Surplus Line Association. Uh, it's taken on sufficient detail that it's tantamount to uh, seeking, really, a, a certificate of authority in the state of California for a, for a full license. We thought that there uh, was uh, quite a bit of misperception, miscommunication, uh, at least on the industry side, uh, and, and uh, mis-expectations as to what is expected, what uh, both the association and the department needed to effectively accomplish uh, their jobs in processing these. So we've been working with uh, the insurance department uh, to come up with a so-called white paper, which we'll post on our website, we'll hand out to applicants, uh, and we'll use this as a source for further discussion about, uh, uh, ab about the process itself. And if you think that this is just sort of a uh, lackadaisical process, we decided to chart the same. Uh, one of my associates, Nicole Zayak, who was uh, involved in this said, boy, I'll tell you, it was a real challenge not to have overlapping lines uh, on this chart. So uh, we give credit to Nicole for designing this without overlapping lines. Uh, and yeah, this too, Warren, will be subject to that test a little bit later. Uh, uh, so we're working on that. We're almost to the point now where we can uh, offer uh, uh, this draft white paper up to the insurance department for their comments. I expect that to happen uh, perhaps as soon as next week. And then we will work with uh, the department to try to uh, 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 make sure that we accurately describe the process to people so that it becomes uh, even more user friendly. Uh, here we have uh, the New York Insurance Exchange. Does anybody remember the New York Insurance Exchange? There's, uh, yeah, several people, okay. And how about the Illinois Exchange and the Florida Exchange? And whatever happened to those uh, brilliant ideas? Well, the brilliant idea has uh, arisen yet again, uh, in, this time from the mouth of uh, Superintendent Danello in New York. Uh, Jerry and I were at an Insurance Information Institute annual meeting about 10 days ago in New York, and uh, Donello gave the keynote address at dinner that night and indicated that he wanted to start the, new, the concept of the New York uh, Exchange again. And, uh, you know, Jerry and I kind of looked at each other and said, okay, well, that's nice, but the last one failed. Why, it, what, it, will this one do any better? And Bob Lew has just arrived, so now we can start. Hey, Bob. Good to see you. Um, so uh, uh, it, it remains to be seen as to what actually is going to be proposed, but the notion is that somehow there's a, a great deal of business going to Bermuda, and if properly constructed, some of that business could be uh, drawn from Bermuda and uh, situs in New York, where brokers on a multi-state basis could have access to a marketplace, a little bit like the Lloyd's model. Uh, We'll see what really happens and whether or not there's adequate capitalization and the like for this and whether there's uh, truly a need for this. Uh, just coincidentally, as we were listening to this and watching this uh, develop, I think the next day Bob Lou sent me an email and said, uh, with a copy of the notice that, uh, uh, that this was being announced, and uh, of course I was aware of it, uh, and he said, how about California? 
So now the association is informally taking a little bit of look as to whether or not it makes sense uh, to suggest that California form a, uh, an exchange as well. Is there a need for it? What does it do? What are the pros and cons? Uh, are there sufficient uh, markets and buyers here for uh, that uh, form of, uh, of entity? So that's something to uh, stay tuned on. And then finally we have uh, uh, the federalization of insurance, question mark. Uh, as we all know, we have a, a dynamic new administration in uh, Washington. Uh, there are a lot of changes going on in the financial services industry. This is the one time in our life that we can actually be proud that we're part of the insurance industry. Why? We're the new sexy thing in town. Low leverage, low rates of return, but in safe investments, nothing uh, out, uh, untoward. Let me ask you this, would you rather be in the banking sector, for example, or the insurance sector? <laughs> we're not shedding a lot of jobs in the insurance sector, so we're, new, we're the new kid in town and you can kind of walk up and down the block with a little bit of uh, cockiness in your walk, I think. Uh, and uh, having said that, there are those in, uh, some of those in D.C. that are thinking that uh, there needs to be more change, more regulation and the like, pulling this all together. Uh, I, I can assure you that there are state regulators uh, led by uh, Danello and uh, Roger Savini uh, and uh, also the Connecticut Insurance Commissioner Sullivan who are quite outspoken on this. State regulation uh, uh, has satisfied itself despite the AIG situation which happened at the holding company, not at the insurance company level and as a result of that uh, we don't, uh, they don't uh, think that there's a need for further federal encroachment. I'm sure that there will be some further federal involvement, uh, but just how much remains to be seen. It's something for us to keep our eyes on. Uh, and we have a couple of reports that were out highlighting the fragmented nature of, of financial services regulation. There's a very thorough GAO report that occurred uh, and it talks about 150 years of piecemeal or fragmented, fragmented uh, regulation. Uh, it also talks about uh, problems that uh, uh, in the uh, international arena and other areas that we're not taking uh, into consideration. And therefore, uh, I expect significant changes there and we're going to be uh, monitoring this. Frankly, we monitor it almost on a daily basis because things are flying pretty fast there. And we have a team uh, that we can access if we need to on a lobbying basis in D.C. to, to help us out. And there was also a group of 30s report led by Paul Volcker, who's on the uh, uh, president's uh, economic uh, team, uh, also highlighting the need for more unity uh, in this area. So that's, uh, that's my report this time around. It's a pleasure doing it. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, we can handle them afterwards. Thank you.